one of the things that I really love with cameras and lenses is that every single year that I've been doing this and shooting videos and making different kind of videos, I always try out new lenses and new camera gear and find some new favorites. And in this video, I want to take you through my favorite Sony lenses as of the year 2023. If this is your first time here, I just want to give you a super welcome. Hope you're going to enjoy this video. Super happy to have you here. Just want to say that. The first lens that I want to talk about is, of course, the lens that I'm shooting this YouTube video with right now. The 24 millimeter f 1.4 GM lens from Sony. When I tried this lens for the first time way back in the summer of 2019, I knew that this lens was special to me. It's one of the lenses that I have always went back to ever since I purchased it in order to get that special creamy look. And there's a bunch of different 24 millimeter lenses that you can buy, but none of them that I've tried looks the same as this particular 24 1.4 lens. Looking at the background right now, you can see that it's very blurry, even though you can see a lot of me in frame. And that is one of the golden things with this lens because you can achieve so much in dark situations because it's such a wide aperture, but you can also get a full body portrait or full body shot and blow out the background, even though you don't have to be so far from your subject. And I've been using this now for, I think, half this year as my main talking head lens. Before that, I was using 20 millimeter f 1.8, but there was something that felt a little bit off with the 20 millimeter that made me go back to the 24 1.4 once again. It's not a heavyweight lens, so you can use it on a gimbal, use it on FX6 on a gimbal, use it on CVE1. Like it doesn't take up that much space at all. When you're vlogging and when you're doing sort of like talking head stuff just by reaching out your arm, I do think it's a little bit tight. Would I buy this instead of a 24 to 70 lens? If you would ask me, I would say yes, mainly because I'm more of a prime lens than what I am of a zoom lens, especially in the range of 24 to 70. I don't know why, but that's just how things have turned out. And I've found that shooting with primes most of the time yields a better result than trying to shoot the same thing with zooms. Talking about vlogging though, the next lens that I want to talk about is the 1635 F 2.8 G Master Mark I. Now I know they have a Mark II that has been released and I'm super keen on getting my hands on that to give it a try. I did try it out very briefly on the Sony Condu event back in Stockholm this summer, but I didn't really feel that there was any sort of, you know, value that I would get to upgrade from this lens to the Mark II lens because, of, I mean, of course, you get the aperture ring and you get a little bit lighter weight, but this lens still performs incredibly good for being a 1635. So for me, I felt that, you know what, I'm just gonna stick with what I got. But what I like about it is the versatility. And I know I said that I don't like to use zooms when I'm shooting stuff, but when I'm vlogging, zooms are one of the best things that you can have because it gives you the option to capture multiple different things with just one lens. And when it comes to the ZVE-1, for example, that I'm using right here, you also have the possibility to crop in digitally on the sensor, which basically gives you a 16 to 50 lens. And that is something that I think is great, especially with the quality that you get out of the G Master. Do I think it's worth spending the money on this lens on top of the Tamron 7028? Hang on, hang on, whoa. Yes, it is. So last year when I dropped my camera into the ground and broke my previous 1635 lens, I actually went out and bought the Tamron 1728 in order to have as a replacement for the 1635 that I usually had. But the downside with this compared to the 1635 GM is that it's not as fast when it comes to autofocus. It does miss quite a lot and yes it's the latest firmware all of that stuff and i don't feel that you get the same quality i do think that investing into the gm series is one of those steps that definitely has improved my video making skills and my video making game but 
I'm also going to say that if you're looking for a really good budget lens and want to start your journey, this lens is freaking amazing for just that. But for some of the videos that I make, which is actually people requiring me to use lenses such as this, then yeah, I do think that this is worth the money. And it's also a really, really good lens to use on a day-to-day -day basis whenever I'm vlogging. The next lens is going to be a lens that I haven't used for that long, but I purchased this after my trip with Peter McKinnon back in Italy of 2022. The 50 millimeter F1.2 GM lens from Sony. The image quality that you get from this lens is wicked. It is razor sharp, freaking amazing color rendition. Everything with this lens is something that I really like. I recently used this lens together with the Sony FX6 when I was shooting a music video for a band called Dead by April. And the cool thing with this lens is that we were standing in this dark room and had this light show on in the background. And I was shooting most of the things in f 1.2 mainly so that we could get sort of like a autofocus lock on the subject and it performed so freaking well i'm blown away by the performance of this lens and it just makes your images look dreamy in a way that no other lens can really replace or give you and it's also nice because you don't have to stand that far from the subject in order to get that super blurry background. So I do think that this lens right now probably is one of my biggest favorites that I have in my arsenal. It is a very expensive lens, but I do think that the money that you pay is something that you can get back if you use it the right way. Next up, old but gold, huh? The Sony 90 millimeter macro. I did not think that I would use this lens as much as I have. And it took me quite some time to actually purchase this lens in particular, mainly because I didn't think I need a macro. But it's proven to be one of my favorite lenses in my kit this year, mainly because you can get so incredibly close to the subjects that you're shooting. I was shooting a workout video from one of my friends where I wanted to have some really tight close-up shots of the machines and some of the workouts. And that was where I used this lens extensively. I think that the 90 millimeter focal length is one of the things that is very close to 85 and it gives it this nice compressed look as well. I really do feel that this lens though should get an upgrade from Sony ASAP because this lens is great, but the autofocus and the tracking is very slow and very choppy. So it doesn't really give you that great of an autofocus lens uh, when you compare it to some of the newer lenses. but. It's a great lens and it does what it does if you use it the correct way. Can highly recommend it if you're doing some product videos or want to take some product photos. It is nice to have a very close up lens that you can use in your videos and definitely helps with the storytelling to make your videos look and feel a little bit more professional. Last lens. Ah, Mr. No Zoom. I know, I know. This is the Sony 7200 f2.8 mark ii being able to have the 2.8 all the way through the entire focal length means that you can shoot in sort of like dim situations and have a very blurry background whenever you want to have that and i feel like the range is kind of perfect because it's a 200 millimeter lens which gives you a little bit tighter compression when you're using clear and zoom i like being able to have this lens in my kit and it's definitely one of the lenses that I use whenever I'm with my family, taking some family photos, bringing it with me to the beach, whatever it might be. It's one of those lenses that gives you a versatile feeling and the same goes for when you're shooting videos with it. You have a bunch of different things that you can capture when you have the 70 200 millimeter range. What I like the most though is that when you are using lenses on a daily basis and you're using different lenses you also start to learn how to see as the focal lengths for example when i'm out shooting with my friends i can say like well that is going to look better with a 50 millimeter lens because i know how this lens looks same thing goes for the 90 millimeter or the macro or the 7200 you sort of like learn the eye of different lenses and i think that that is one of the most important thing why you should try and see which kind of lenses that fits your work the best these lenses are my personal favorites of the year of 2023 and it's probably going to be 
way different come next year and the year after that. But this year, I found that these lenses have served me incredibly well and I wanted to share that with you. Really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I would love to see you in the next video as well. Peter from Sweden saying goodbye, bye.